So hey what's up everyone and welcome back to our let's make a game in unity series. This is our fifth video and we're going to introduce some win lose conditions into our game and we're going to be able to move our planets quicker with our spacebar. So let's get into today's video. Go ahead and subscribe for more great videos like this one. Okay, so first things first for this week, we're going to make our game more interactive. So it's a very simple game, but we want to have the user actually do something. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that our planets will move quicker when we press the spacebar. So the game will end when an asteroid hits the planet. So we're going to go to our planet rotation around the sun script. And we don't want to change the speed, we just want to look at the update method. So first thing we need to do is we want to get input from our spacebar and we want to know when it gets depressed. So we're going to take input dot get key, get key down, there we go, and then we're going to put in space because Unity already has the certain keys registered. So that's all we need to do. And we just need to move that inside our if statement. There we go. But what we want to do is we want to change the speed. So we're just going to make it that the speed increases. So we're just going to take our usual speed that we start off with and we're going to times it by 2. So let's add an else. And that will just run when we don't depress the spacebar. There we go. So let's hit save and let's hit play. Okay, so hit your spacebar. It doesn't work, right? Exactly. I did this for a reason, because I want you to understand completely how the key down method works. Okay, so we need to make a boolean, because the thing is, the update method runs every single frame. So when you say get key down, it's actually just making a key down for that specific frame. So we need to create a boolean called space depress. And we're going to set that to false because it, we know it hasn't been depressed at the start of the game. So then we need to change that to an else if so that we can control it because we're going to put in an input dot get key up so that we can change the boolean value. Okay, so now when we get our key down, we're going to set our space depressed to true. So then we know that our space bar is still being held down. And we're going to change that value to false in our get key up. So when the space bar is released, that will trigger. So now we need a new if statement to give action when our space bar is depressed. So we're going to copy that code that we had there and we're going to paste it in there. So now when our space bar is depressed, our speed will increase and else the normal speed will resume. So if our spacebar is not depressed, our normal speed that we started off with would carry on. And if we do hold it down, our speed will increase by two. Okay, so let's hit save and go back into Unity and hit play. Now, if we hold down the spacebar, you can see the dots move further apart from one another. So it's working perfectly. I hope you guys understand how the key down method works inside of the update method, which gets called every frame. Just remember that. So any line of code that's in there will be reiterated every single frame. Okay, so now we're going to do our win-lose condition. So we're going to start off by creating a new script called gameplay controller script. Uh, yep, I don't know what that was. <laughs> I'll just open it again. <laughs> All right. So in here, we're just going to have one method, public void, and we're just going to call it end game. And then we need to call this method from a different class. So we need to get a reference to it. So 
when we hit the when the planet gets into contact with an asteroid the game needs to end so let us get a reference to our gameplay controller script so let's just make a header and we're going to say public gameplay controller script uh, yep there we are and now we're going to reference it so gameplay controller script and then we're going to call that end game method all right so let's hit save and now we need to put a debug dot log because we just want to print out that the game is ending so we're just going to say game over sad face because we can <laughs> all right so hit save and then everything should be fine so now we need to go and give that script the the asteroid needs to get a physical reference to that script so we're just going to add our scripting onto our space and there our gameplay controller script will lie because that game object doesn't change so now we need to go and reference okay so go to our asteroid and there we go that's where our space needs to go in because that's where our script is attached to but we can't access it so what do we need to do we need to find it automatically so we're going to create a new tag and we're going to call it space okay now we need to go back into our code after we've set the tag and now we need to find a reference to that code so back in our code what we're going to do now is we're going to say game object but there's only one of them so we don't need to find an array of them so we're going to call it gameplay control script and we're going to just say ref for reference then we're going to say game object dot find game object with tag not game objects make sure that the s is not there and then we're just going to put the string space which is the tags name that we just defined so then we're going to hit enter or return and then we're going to actually get that reference so gameplay controller script control script is equal to game object this is how we would usually do it so we're going to say game object dot get component and then we're going to put our component name in there or our script reference rather so we're going to say gameplay control script there we go but now we know we want that reference in there so we're going to take that game object out and we're just going to replace it with ref there we go so now our asteroid will automatically find our game control script game object for us we don't need to tell it where it is so now the game will end and let's hit play okay so now as we can see there on the right hand side it has found it automatically so every single asteroid that gets made will actually find the game object the space game object because of its tag and we don't need to worry about it any further okay so now we want to see when our game is ending so it's just a printout so what we're going to do is we're just going to move the console down there and this is where our debug.log appears so remember we put that debug.log game over we want that to be printed out to us so now if we hit play it will appear in our console when we actually lose so let's try and lose <laughs> okay so i'm just gonna really speed up uh yeah you see that's just skill right there <laughs> but now it should say game over there we go it did it twice because there were two asteroids so we need to fix that so before we fix that let's just reward ourselves a little bit and make a method for increasing a score so let's just say public void increase score 
and there we go and now we need a score variable so let's create a private score variable so private int score and we just set it to zero because every time we start the game it needs to be zero and then we're just going to say score plus plus and that's all we need to do so that number will just be increased by one every time the increase score method is called and let's print out our score every time that the number increases so we're just going to say plus score and let's close it off and there we go now we're going to go back to our asteroid controller script and there we have our end game so we're just going to copy that and above that we're going to do the same thing but we're going to say increase score there we go and now that method will be called every time the asteroid hits the sun which means that we haven't died yet so that constitutes an increase in score so well done to us <laughs> so let's hit play i'm just going to run it in the small little block on the left at the bottom so that you can see the console at work and I'm going to try not lose because we need to get some points here. And there we go. With such amazing skill. There we can see our score increasing. And if we die, that will end. Yeah, look at that skill. Yeah, you didn't think I was going to make that, did you? Yeah, uh, yeah. and they are lost. But you see, here's the problem. So our score keeps increasing after our game is over. So we need to go fix that. So we're gonna to go to our gameplay control script and we're gonna add in a boolean to say if the game has ended. So private bool game ended and we're gonna set that to false because we don't want it to end as we start. <laughs> and inside our end game method, we're gonna put game ended equals true. And in our increase score, we're going to put an if statement saying, if the game is ended, false. So if it has not ended yet, we can increase the score. So let's just copy and paste that inside or cut. And there we have a we don't need an else statement because nothing else needs to happen if this condition is not true. Okay, so let's give it a go. I'm going to try my best again with my really awesome skills. <laughs> and there we go, our game has ended. But as you can see, the asteroids are hitting the sun, but the score is not increasing. So that just means our code is working. So we want to make our game end when it ends, like... I know, duh, right? <laughs> so the first thing we want to do is we want to stop the spawning of asteroids. So first thing we have to do is we have to go to our gameplay control script and we need a reference to our asteroid spawn controller. So we're going to just reference that quickly. So asteroid spawn controller. Yes. And then we're going to make this one public because this one doesn't need to be found automatically because there's only one. So there we go. Okay, cool. So now we need to go and create a method inside of our asteroid spawn to actually call when our game ends so that the asteroids stop spawning. So we need to go to our asteroid spawn controller thingy yep that's its name <laughs> and then we're going to create a new method called public void stop spawning asteroids i think that's descriptive enough and all we're going to type in here is cancel invoke because that just means that the invoke repeating method will be cancelled completely <laughs> And now we just need to reference that method, or call it rather. So dot, there we go, stop spawning asteroids. And that's all we need to do for that.
So now we need to tell our gameplay controller script where to find our asteroid spawn controller script. So we just drag it in and then we can hit play. There we go. I'll just tap the space bar a little bit. <laughs> there we go. And let's hit an asteroid now. There we go. And game over. So you can see our score isn't increasing and our asteroids stop coming in from the sides. So that means our script is working once again. Woohoo. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's stop our game and let's make our planet actually disappear when an asteroid hits it. So we need to go to our planet rotation around sun script. Uh -huh. Yep. And the trigger is selected, which is what we needed. So let's go to our asteroid. Let's just check. Okay, so this needs this trigger needs to be ticked because we need that reference tag to the asteroid. All right, so now that that is done, so in our asteroid controller script, we're lazy to remember this, so we're gonna just copy and paste the code for the on-trigger 2D, and we're just gonna paste it underneath our planet rotation around sun script, and then we're gonna just edit a little bit with some magic. No, I'm just kidding. Not there's no magic. And then we just change the tag to asteroid and we can delete our planet and take out the increased score because we don't need that. We just need our planet to disappear. So you guys can put in some particle effects if you want to. If you want me to put that in next week, just let me know in the comments down below. And now we're just going to create a new private collider 2D. And we're just going to call it, let's call it Planet Collider. Yeah, that's better. Name your stuff properly, guys. Because otherwise you won't have a clue what you're doing anymore when there's a lot of code. So we just need to get that component. And we'll say get component. No, wait. Not get, get contacts. Get component. There we go. Collider 2D. And actually that component is stuck to this object. So we can just say equals this dot there we go, dot get component. Awesome. So that should work perfectly. So let's hit play. And I really hope this is going to work perfectly. I'm just kidding, it's going to work perfectly. I know this. <laughs> and there I go with the space bar. I'm so good at this game. I'm just kidding, I'm not really. I'm trying my best, alright. <laughs> Okay, score of one, and boom, dead. And our planet disappears, and you'll see our dots also disappear, or disappear, disappear. Our markers also disappear after a while. And there we go, there our game ends. And that's it for this week's tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me once again. And thank you to all our new subscribers. The channel is growing very nicely at the moment so thank you very much to everyone and have an amazing week further see you next week cheers